Greetings and welcome back to the O Level series. In this first of three episode series on linear law, we are going to look at forming a non linear equation. The success criteria for today will be for students to be able to form a non linear equation from any given linear law graph. Let's begin with a recap on coordinate geometry. In coordinate geometry, we have already learned about the Cartesian coordinate system and how a point can be represented by two numbers, its x and y coordinate. We have also learned that for any straight line on the Cartesian plane, we are able to find the steepness of the line, which is also known as the gradient. This is found by finding the ratio of the rise against the run, and this is also computed by the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Lastly, we have also learned to find the equation of a straight line, which is given by the formula y equals to mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. Let me give you a real-life example of a linear law graph and how it is useful. Let's take the example of the COVID-19 pandemic. If we were to plot the population of infected patients P as the vertical axis against time, as the horizontal axis, we run into a few problems. Firstly, because the pandemic grows in an exponential function, in the early onset of the virus, there's very few patients. But as time progresses, the number of patients grows so fast that we have to constantly rescale the y-axis to fit the data in. It's also harder to interpret. Let's take these two hypothetical countries represented by the blue and red line. How bad is it in these two countries? How easy is it to compare? Can we even extrapolate the lines? It's just a little bit harder in the normal graph. However, if we were to change the y-axis and now we plot log base 10 of p against t, this is known as a semi-log graph. The y-axis now increases by a factor of 10 for every unit interval. Sometimes we see a y-axis that is labelled 1, 10, 100, 1000 instead of the usual fixed scale of 10, 20, 30, 40. That's also a semi-log graph. Now, these two countries can be modelled as straight-line graphs. The gradient here is proportional to the doubling rate, the time it takes for the number of patients to double, assuming that the rate of infection stays constant. In this linear law form, we can see that the blue and red country have the same rate of infection and that the red country was probably just infected earlier. We can also extrapolate these two graphs easily. You can see that these graphs are easier to visualize data over time for exponential growth. It is also better for supporting simple analysis like regression, extrapolation and measuring the doubling rate. So what exactly is linear law? Linear law is almost the same as our normal coordinate geometry, except that the vertical axis is no longer small y, but a capital Y, which is some function of x and y. Similarly, the horizontal axis is no longer the small x, but some function of x and y too. The gradient m will still be the rise over the run, but this time we are taking big y2 minus big y1, over big x2 minus big x1. This is no surprise since any coordinate that you read off this map will be measured in the form of big x, big y. The equation of the linear law graph will be big y equals to m big x plus c, where m is still the gradient, but c is now the big y intercept. Let's now look at our first guided practice. In this question, we are given a linear law graph. Note that the vertical axis, the big Y, is Y over X, and the horizontal axis, the big X, is X squared. The graph passes through the point 6, negative 2 and has a big X intercept at 3. We want to express Y in terms of X. The first step is to find the gradient. We'll use the formula big Y2 minus big Y1 over big X2 minus big X1. We will get negative two-third. Next, we can find the Y-intercept C. 
we'll substitute the gradient that we've found, negative two third, and we'll sub in any point. So we'll use six comma negative two. Although if you use three comma zero, that would work too. And we'll sub that into the equation big Y equals to M big X plus C. So we have big Y equals to negative two equals to the gradient negative two third times the big X, which is six plus C. Bringing all the things on the right to the left, except for C, we can make C the subject and C will be equals to two. The step three, we're now gonna find the equation of this straight line. So big Y is equals to the gradient negative two third big X plus C, which is two. Next, we'll substitute away the big Y and the big X. So big Y is Y over X and big X is X squared. Now to make Y the subject, we can just multiply X throughout. This will give us Y equals to negative two third X cubed plus two X. In our second practice question, we have another linear law graph. This time, we have log base 10 of y as the vertical axis and square root of x as our horizontal axis. This graph passes through two points, 7, 8 and negative 3, negative 2. Express y in terms of x. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's go through the answer. Step 1. We need to find the gradient. So we use the formula m equals to big Y2 minus big Y1 over big X2 minus big X1. Substituting the points in, did you get a gradient of 1? Moving on to step 2. We need to find the big Y intercept. So now we substitute the gradient equals to 1 and big X equals to 7 and big Y equals to 8 in the equation y equals to mx plus c. This will give us c equals to 1. Did you get a big y intercept of 1? Moving on to step 3. Now we have the gradient and the y intercept. We'll substitute them all into the equation big y equals to m big x plus c. This gives us big y equals to 1 big x plus 1. Next, we replace the big Y and the big X. Big Y is equals to log Y, and big X is equals to square root of X. We need to make Y the subject. So we're going to change this from logarithmic form to in this form. So we'll shift it around and make Y the subject. Y will be equals to 10 to the power of square root X plus 1. Did you get this answer? Now it's time for you to practice. In the info section below, I'm going to link you to my e-textbook that has an applet that will randomly generate questions with answers for you to self-practice to your heart's content. Do check it out to master this topic. Finally, let's go back to where we started. Let's go back to our success criteria that we set out at the start of the lesson. Are you now able to form a non-linear equation from a linear law graph? Please give me your feedback in the comment section below. We have come to the end of part 1. Stay tuned for part 2, where we will be looking at constructing a linear law graph from a non-linear equation. Until then, have a great day of learning.